This is a kind of an ETF. I kind of call them package trades. They kind of do two things that would, would have required two ETFs or a bunch of work. They just, you hit buy and you get a trade on. This one's going long cyclicals and short defensive sectors. So cyclicals being like tech, uh, discretionary, defensive being like utilities and staples. So here it is, it's uh, very new, 24 million. The fee is 45, which is pretty low for one of these package trades type ETFs. Um, let's look at the performance since it launched, right? And I put XLK and XLU here so you can get an idea that when you go 150, 50 long short, it kind of winds up in the middle of XLK and XLU, right? So you're not, you know, that's what you're looking at long term. Now, let's hone into one month, right? Or the end of, uh, for November because this is when this trade actually started happening in reality. And you can see it does much better, much closer to the best performing sector here. Here's utilities here. So I think the key for this ETF is if you can get the defensive sectors to go down while the other ones go up, you really win. Uh, but you're gonna get that spread here and this is sort of a, a, a way to conveniently make it happen. All right, Eric, still with me is David Mazza of Direction. And it feels like the, the duration of each of these market trends used to last months, then it became weeks, and now it's become days. Are these meant to be buy and hold investments or short-term daily trading tools? Well, really, as Eric pointed out, they can be a bit of both. So for a long-term investor who's looking to take a view, for example, that maybe value is going to outperform growth, which we've heard multiple times over a 10-year period, yes. RWVG is a great way to do that because you're overweight value relative to the growth. Now, more recently, we've seen these pockets where cyclicals and defensives have really been battling with each other. Uh, and what we've seen of late is with interest rates moving back up, yield curve of re uh, uninverting, mm -hmm. we've seen cyclicals outperform defensives really remarkably. I want to go back to what you said about RWVG, which is uh, counting on value outperforming growth. We can't count the number of times that people have looked for that to happen. It never lasts, even when it does happen for a bit. It always is a head fake. Should we write off this trade for the rest of the year? Well, I think many people are now finally saying, well, value's back, right? Anytime we get one week, one month of performance, all the guys who've been hanging out saying this jump back in. In our opinion, now's not the time to dive back into value unless you get that 10-year view. And if it is, you might take a bit of pain because at some point when value comes back, I think we're gonna have to see actually a market correction for that to be the case. Mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna outperform in some of the best ways it maybe ever has historically, just because of where valuations between the two sides of the trade are. All right, so look for a correction before you hop back into value. Eric, full disclosure here, we featured a direction ETF in our life cycle, and it's their 150-50 ESG fund. Yeah, this is a, a similar, except for ESG, which I found this interesting. It's almost like you're saying ESG is a factor. Most people would buy ESG to just you get rid of companies they don't want to put money into. You're actually saying this will actually increase performance, but would this be a disguised long tech short energy kind of ETF? No, um, so you know what's been filed for uh, has actually is looking at it within sectors themselves. So oh, okay. that's important distinction with any type of investment, whether we're talking ESG or factors, because you're right. You don't want to get too many biases. You know, value right now is really all about financials versus tech, mm -hmm. right? As financials do well, value is doing well, uh, and growth underperforms if technology does well. Certain type of factor type exposures uh, and more nuanced uh, type of instruments, you want to actually look within an industry or within a sector and compare the best and worst relative to one another. Okay, interesting answer there. We ran the numbers on ETF Go, and out of the, what, more than 2,200 ETFs that we track here, the best performer this year is Nail. That's the ticker. It's your three times home builders ETF. It's up about 196% so far this year. Yeah. Um, Eric, few people would hold on to this for this long. I mean, that chart looks great, but it's not like you're going to hold on to it because it's not a buy and hold investment, is it? Yeah, it's up more than four times year to date over its index, basically. That's the compounding effect. Correct. It's lucky when this happens. Um, how many people play this long versus just go for that short-term daily thing? Yeah, well, so, you know, we really advocate the leverage inverse products for tactical traders. Um, and oftentimes we don't hear of people who have you know, held it for longer than one or two day periods. But what you're getting at we is, is absolutely correct. We often focus on the negative impact that compounding can have when you have volatile markets. But when you have an asset like home builders that have really been in a sweet spot with consumers and with the economy hanging in here, you know, and volatility is low, you can actually have compounding be a benefit for you. 
And you know, we've seen Direction diversify away from just le the leverage company. What are your strategic plans going forward? We're going to see more plain vanilla from Direction. Well, Direction never wants to just be a plain vanilla me too type type operation. Our core heritage, though, is amplifying exposures, accessing the short side, and really building off of our expertise for managing leverage and inverse products, which are inherently more complicated than managing plain vanilla products. So what we're excited to do, and why I joined the firm about a year ago, mm -hmm. is to help diversify, take our expertise, and build it into bring area, new areas that may seem more plain vanilla in nature, but are really just broader parts of an investor's portfolio. I know Eric is excited to look for the three times ESG fund. Yeah, are we going to see a three that. times ESG? I want to see how, how many people are really committed. Uh, I don't expect that to come out anytime soon, but you know, we are always looking for new opportunities.